Welcome back. In the previous segment, we talked about access control. In this segment, we are going to talk about some classes that you have really been using and well, maybe some which uh, are slightly new, but which you will want to use. So graphics classes, you may have guessed that our graphics primitives such as line, rectangle, circle are actually classes. Okay. So when we create lines, we are really just uh, creating, uh, creating instances of that class or these are structs and we are creating structs. Okay. And when we write something like line L say 0, 0, 55, 70, this really is a constructor call. So in our graphics library, there is a class called line or a struct called line and there is a constructor which takes four arguments and this is really a constructor call and that returns a line object okay, or a line struct. So the constructor in this case is going to initialize an area of memory to hold information about the object. Okay. So which is what normal constructors do, okay. they initialize the, uh, the, 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 the members. But as we said earlier, the constructors can contain arbitrary code as well. So in this case, the constructor code is actually also going to draw the objects object on the screen. Okay. So important point that our uh, uh, line creation uh, commands are really constructor calls to line a class called line and similarly for circles, rectangles, text. Now in the graphics classes there are data members which keep track of things like where is the graphics object, what is the size, okay. So what is the size, what is the color and these members are private and therefore you do not get to see them, okay. How do you change the color? You have been given, you have been given a call. So you can write L dot, you have been given a command of something. But as you can see now, this is just a member function. So you have been given member function. You have been given that control panel which enables you to change colors. Okay. So you do not have to directly go in and change colors. Those are the colors, there is some information kept about the colors, but that is private information. And you do not want to know that because that information is kind of complicated. Okay. So instead of that, it is better to, better to have this have the commands which is convenient for you to see. And also graphics operations such as move and rotate are also member functions. And how does, how does your program get all of this? Well, the header file simple CPP fetches or includes all the class definitions when you include that file in your program. Now like graphics classes, there also are input output classes which you have been using. Okay. So C and C out are objects of class I stream and O stream respectively and they are defined in the file I O stream. Okay. If you remember, we had a command C in dot get line. of some buffer, buffer uh, some buffer name, char, char buffer name and maybe the length of the char buffer name. So now you can see by the syntax that this is a member function. Okay? So you have been using member functions already in graphics as well as in IO. Okay? Now you may, you may say that oh IO stream uh, I did not explicitly include, but we have said, we have discussed this earlier and we have told you that look, that got included because you included simple CPP. And 
less than less than and greater than greater than are actually operators and they have been defined for the objects by using things like operator greater than greater than ok. So that is what it is. I stream is another class like I stream and that is used for file IO. So you can create an object of a class I have stream and associate it with a file on your computer. So once you do that, you can read from that file pretty much like you read from CN. Okay? And you can create an object of class uh, and you can create an object of class OF stream uh, which can be used for writing files okay? in a exactly a similar manner and we will see an example next. But for this you have to include the header file f stream. Okay? So if you include that header file then you, you get to use if stream and of stream. Okay, so here is an example of file IO. Okay? So this is our program. So as you can see it is including f stream. It is also including simple CPP because of all the usual things that we have been talking about. Okay? So, uh, namespaces, a namespace std and io stream and things like that. Okay, so what is new? So here is uh, a definition. Okay? So we are defining an object in file and this is a constructor for it. Okay? Its, its type is if stream. So we are defining an if stream object. So what does this definition really do? So it says, it really says the following. It says that in my program the name in file is going to be there. Okay? So that is the if stream. But while constructing it, I am associating it with the file f1.txt which is going to be present in my directory. Okay? So that is what this line does. It is creating, it is, it is a constructor call. Okay? So it is constructing a variable called in file and its type is if stream. But the constructor is linking a file on your computer to this name inside your program. Okay? Similarly, of stream is uh, a, a, a structure type and you are creating, this is a constructor call again, so you are creating a variable or an object, a name out file and type of stream and the constructor is associating the file name f2.txt with this out file. Okay? Now f2.txt is expected to be created when the program executes, it is an output file. A file. So it, uh, it need not be there early on. Okay? And here is the main program, so inside the main program what are we doing? We are, we have a variable v uh, of type int and we are reading an integer from in file. So this operator works like before for c in. So if I had said c in, I would have extracted, it would have extracted an integer from c in. Now it simply extracts an integer from in file. So from this file in particular and this would have sent uh, the value of v to c out had, it, had this been c out but now it is just going to send the value of v to out file that is it. So this is how you can read files and uh, write files and uh, there are some, there are some uh, additional details that you might want to know like maybe how do I append to a file and things like that. So that is discussed in the book but we are not going to discuss it in this lecture. Okay. So anyway, so what does this what does this program do? So this program is going to read 10 numbers from in file and create a new file f2.txt and put those numbers inside that file. Okay. So this is of course trivial processing of files, but now you get the idea. Okay. So you should be able to write programs which take data from files and which put data into files, not only take data from the keyboard and put data onto the screen. Alright, so what have we discussed? We have discussed graphics classes, 
we have discussed input output classes and some of these things you have already already been using but now you know that the commands that you are using involved classes and constructors and member functions okay next i am going to make some general remarks and then i will conclude this lecture but before that let's take a quick break